Hi, it's Starnell with Wales and Recipes, and this is my review of the Chefman Turbo Fry Dual Basket Air Fryer. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed. All right, now that I've got everything unboxed, just going to show you not much in their way of accessories, just a couple of basket racks that go inside. We'll put those inside in a moment, and. There, um, I want to tell you that there are two four and a half quart baskets, so nine quarts total, but that's across two four and a half quart baskets. Paperwork, not a lot, this little warning thing, a little quick start guide, little manual, no, uh, nothing additional other than just the manual. It's got a little air frying chart in here. What else do we have in here? It's just the air frying chart. And details about how to operate the unit. From what I've seen um, from my looking at this unit and what it does in advance, they don't try and make it do a lot more than air frying. They try and make it, you know, they try to, seems to make it a dedicated air fryer. They didn't try and make it a jack of all trades type of cooker. And basket air fryers really are, even when they've got other settings going, they're still really doing air frying anyway. So it's really trying to just be true to the trade of air frying, mostly, from what I could tell. But that's all the paperwork, so there's not much to that. I wanted to, from my notes, give you some other details about this cooker. And just want to point out for everyone, you know, just in case, because there's always people who are new to this, it's not a deep fryer, okay? So you're not going to fill the basket with oil and do any type of deep oil frying. Never do that with these. This is air fryer. I don't do deep fryers, um, Lord willing, never, never have, and Lord willing, never will. But that's a whole nother matter. So the dimensions of the cooker, it's a 13 inches high by 15 inches wide by 9 inches in depth. The cooker is a 1700 watt cooker. So 1700 watts is pretty high end. So hoping that it will perform well. But at that high of a wattage, you do want to have this plugged into a separate circuit from other appliances. If you try and run this on a circuit or on an outlet that has other appliances on the same circuit in the same area of the house, you're probably going to blow the circuit because 1700 is close to your max by itself. With other stuff, I mean, even a 130 watt blender could, you know, put you pretty much over the top if you're, you know, doing this and, you know, 200 130 watt blender or something you could still blow a circuit so you want to have this on a separate dedicated circuit just want to stress that because there's always people that use these and then they say oh this blew my circuit it's bad no your understanding of cookers is bad and you just have to accommodate for it so I wanted to show you the power plug it's a pretty lengthy cord I mean it's long as my arm so very long cord two prong polarized cord and I do want to mention that the temperature ranges for this cooker are between 200 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. They don't give details from what I could find in my advanced look at a manual of the time ranges. So we'll have to look at those when actually going deeper into this review. Now let me give you a look around the cooker. You see the front, nothing on sides, nothing on that side. The back does have some exhaust, little exhaust area in the back. The top has some, looks like intake in the top, so it's probably taking air in the top, running it through the cooker, pushing it out the back is what's going on. Underneath, since this one's so light, I, I'll show you underneath. I usually don't do this, but you can see underneath. I don't think that it's like exhausting air out the bottom, but you know, we do temperature testing and all, we'll feel around there. But that's how it looks underneath, just so that you have that look. Don't expect that for many cookers that I show you underneath, because a lot of them are heavy and I don't want to drop them. But that one's not too heavy. Anyway, that's uh, look around things. Now I want to give you a close-up view of the cooker, and I do want to add, before anyone asks, if anyone asks how much does it weigh, I don't know, but not very much. Um, so, opening up the baskets baskets here and I'm going to take the racks set those inside so put that in there like that so we've got a rack in put the rack in the other one that's how it's supposed to go in like that and don't worry about the little rubber ends on those 
basically if you have problems with those then contact chefman you know if you have problems with them or they come off you know wear off or something contact chefman see if you can get replacements for them but usually they are heat resistant and they'll usually last but if they like i said get worn contact chefman see if they can hook you up now i just wanted to show inside i mean now notice it's plastic inside of there it's not metal plastic is not going to retain heat as well as metal interior but we'll see how things do in our testing and such and you see up top you got a couple of heating coils up there so uh don't see much of anything else up top there i'm not seeing where the ambient probe is you see the fan or maybe you can't but there's a fan behind both of the heating coils and you can see like straight to the back i mean like you look at this one you can see straight to the back to the exhaust out the back so that's uh, pretty interesting you can see straight straight out usually I can't see straight out the back with a lot of these cookers but this one I can so that's your look inside the cooker all right so we have the chefman now next to the old ninja foodie eight quart two basket air fryer so eight quarts versus eight well versus nine quarts so two four quart baskets versus two four and a half quart baskets here and so basically opening up and just getting baskets out you can kind of see the difference there is a noticeable larger size in this one versus that one so you are able to see I mean it's obvious this one's a bigger basket no doubt about it so just measuring if I go in this four quart basket I want to make sure that the make sure that the uh, little thing there is further down I think I had it up a little bit but you can see there it's clearly a bigger basket on the chefman I'm just going to measure from top to bottom inside and I'm getting four inches there on the chefman top to bottom inside I get four inches as well now when I go side to side on the chefman seven inches in this way nine and a half inches so remember seven nine and a half in here I get a little over six inches like six and a quarter and I get just a little over nine well no actually nine when I'm right there so nine so just no doubt a smaller basket between the two of them so that's your comparison with the uh, eight I guess I can do some outside measurements as well so let's go across the top across the top here is 14 and a quarter whereas with the chefman going across the top is uh, what do we get here it's about 15 on height we see they're about the same um, maybe the maybe the ninja foodies a uh, just a slight bit shorter Ninja Foodie is like maybe 12 and a half. The Shuffman's about 13. Going uh, from the front to the back. And I'm going to the handle end. I'm seeing about 12 and a half. Well, about 12 and a half inches on the Ninja Foodie. On the Shuffman, front to back. About 13 inches. So just a little bigger. So that's a comparison of those two. All right, so now for comparison with something a little bigger, we have the Ninja Foodi 10 quart two basket air fryer versus the Chefman four and a half quart, well nine quart, two four and a half quarts versus two five quart baskets in this one. So, going to just get the baskets out, and it does appear. I mean, just visually looking, I would. Man, I mean, just looking at them, whew, it's tough. I mean, I guess at first I thought, well, maybe this one's bigger, but I'm thinking maybe it was just my, you know, knowing that this is supposed to be a five-quart basket versus this one four and a half. So I just immediately thought, well, maybe this one's, I mean, I just thought this one's bigger. But when I take a closer inspection of the two, you know, a real close look, it it's hard to say one's bigger than the other. It's 
hard. I'm going to have to rely on measurements to uh, try and determine. So let me get my tape measure here and see. So inside here, it's um, it's a little over four inches. You see, we've got about four and a half. Well, about four and a half, almost four and a half. Whereas we know this one was four when we stuck in there. So doing front to back, I've got nine, nine inches there. In this one, I think we had we had about nine. Yeah, we had about nine there. And then over across, we've got uh, seven. And so this one, we've got seven. So the only difference I'm seeing is this one's just a little deeper. And I guess I'm going to do diagonal also because the shape of the basket is not exactly the same. So diagonally, I get 10 inches. Now this one diagonally, I get 10 inches. Okay. So the only difference is really that the ninja is just a little deeper. A little deeper. I would, I would, um, I mean, I'm not seeing a huge difference, folks, as far as the size, even though this one's supposed to be a five quart and this one's supposed to be a four and a half quart. They are super close as far as that. Super close about that. So let's see about the exterior. If I go across the top of this one, I've got uh, maybe 16 and a quarter versus what we have with the chef man, which is about 15. And the front to back right quick, we're looking at to the handle, I'm looking at 12 and a half, about 12 and a half there. Whereas with the Chefman, I'm looking at about 13. But when we talk about height, I mean, they're, they're virtually identical. I mean, they're both up in that about 13 inch range. Maybe the Chefman, maybe is it a little, maybe a little taller? Maybe? Yeah, I mean... Size alone, there's not much difference between these two in my opinion, not much at all. But we'll get more into the functions and all of this one, of the Chefman, because that's what we're reviewing here. If you have interest in like the 10 quart Ninja Foodi Dual Basket Air Fryer, there's a full review of this. Many cook videos of this here on the channel. So you can check those out. There's a full playlist about this here on the channel. Two playlists about this here on the channel. And um, there's like Tens of other cookers, well over 70 other cooker, countertop cooker reviews here on the channel. Well over 800 videos of different cooks and things of different countertop cookers. So just, you know, check it out. If you have a desktop computer, you can go to the YouTube channel for uh, Wave Oven Recipes. And you can use the little search box there on the channel itself. And you can search for pretty much anything you want. And like I said, there's playlists galore. So... Nothing sponsored or given to me for any of the videos that I do. None. Not a one. Nothing given, nothing sponsored, and I like it that way. Just to make it clear, I like it that way. I pay for them myself at a store, just like all of you. So, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and continue with the chef. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do an initial plug-in here. So, plugging things in, and we'll see if something lights up. And there we go. Got some light action. Good thing I didn't turn the big light on because I want to make sure that you can see there's like a little blue one up here. And of course, you see the temperatures. So, there's like basket one and basket two. And I can like, when I touch two now, both of them will lit up as if I'm going to cook things in both baskets. Or I can untouch one, or I can hit two and untouch one. And that way it's like, um, you know, I was cooking basket two, but whatever one is blue is the one that is active. So let's talk about some of the functions and everything that you can do here. As I said, this cooker isn't trying to be a jack of all trades. It knows it's an air fryer and that's what it does. So these different presets here are basically setting you a time and a temperature. They aren't trying to do anything fancy other than that. So there's like the chicken function and let's see there's a fries function so you see 350 15 minutes fries and I hit fries at 350 15 minutes 
I hit, uh, what is that? Looks like steaks or burgers? I think it's burgers. Yeah, it's a burger. <laughs> Sorry, it's a burger. So it's still 350.15, it doesn't change. Then I do bacon, 350. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what, what it's accomplishing by hitting the different buttons. They all still say 350.15 minutes. So there's vegetables, steaks, and then there's shrimp. Um, so, I mean, I guess if you wanted to do shrimp different from fish, you know, because the shellfish, you could. But it doesn't seem like the actual values change at all, regardless which one I press. So, that's interesting. So, let's just say I'm doing like 350, and I already went over the um, different different temperature ranges, but let's go through the time. Oh, you see time, as I went down to 1, it immediately flipped over to 60, which means that 60 minutes must be our maximum. So I'm just going to let it, and I guess, you know, it's good that you can hold it, and it speeds up and runs through, but it looks like our maximum is 60 minutes, and our minimum is 1 minute. Now, since it's not trying to be a dehydrator, you don't need, like, any long-running you know 24 hour type of runs or anything of that sort but I do find it interesting it's like no matter which one of these presets you press nothing changes as far as the uh, time and temp so that's interesting and like I said you can do two or one to you know do two baskets or one now if you hit two baskets you get some extra buttons just to kind of show you that you can basically sync your baskets so that they basically are doing the exact same thing. So when I hit sync, you see they both go to 375. They both have the same time of 30 minutes. Now if I did sync finish, let's say that I take this off and I adjust the time down. Let's say I wanted to do 26, 25 minutes on this side versus 30 on the other side. I could do sync finish. And what would happen in a sync finish scenario is that basket one would start cooking, go for five minutes, and then after five minutes, basket two would start going so that the finish is synchronized between the two. So that's how you can use the sync finish function versus your syncing of baskets. Oh, now when I now when I'm doing two baskets and I hit the presets, you see things change. So that's interesting. So now I hit chicken, and it's 375, 30 minutes. I don't think that a whole chicken's going to cook in 30 minutes at 375, but that's what they give you. I hit fries, now it's 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and let's see, 20 minutes. I hit burger, 10 minutes, and let's see what the temperature is going to be, 350. Bacon, 400 degrees, and let's see, 10 minutes. Fish, it's going to be 350 apparently, and I guess that's 10 minutes also. Vegetables. 15 minutes. Yes, it's going to try 350 for that. So steak, it's going to be 10 minutes at 350. Yeah, 10 minutes at 350 there. Shrimp, 10 minutes at uh, 400. Yeah, so three minutes. No, 10 minutes at 400 for your shrimp. That's pretty a uh, hard hit, I think, for shrimp. But I guess maybe it worked. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so basically, that's how I guess your presets are recognize when you yeah like when I do one basket it's like I don't know yeah now it's like I hit vegetable and I'm on one basket and it's still at 400 10 minutes it doesn't change that's interesting when you do two baskets the presets seem to work when you do one basket the presets don't seem to work that's uh, kinda odd but interesting now I want to do a quick uh, test here that's a 410 minutes, that's fine. But I want to check how to pause the cooker, see if maybe the stop button works as pause. So I'm going to hit start, and it starts. Now if I hit stop, yeah, it just immediately kills the cook totally. So the stop doesn't work as a pause. But I'm going to go ahead and start again. Now it's, I guess, defaulted back to 350, 15 minutes, that's okay. So I hit start now, I pull the basket. That does act as a pause, apparently. I put the basket back in and yeah, it picks back up. So basically when you want to pause the cook, you got to pull the basket out. Hitting the stop button will totally kill everything which you 
don't want to do if you just want to pause things. All right, so I've got an app here that measures sound, like sound decibels. And so you can see where it's going when I talk, it's going up to about 60 range. But I want to measure how loud the cooker is while it's running. So I've got both baskets on. I'm going to use the sink baskets function just so they both run at the same time. It's like um, 15 minutes, 350. We can bump that up to the full 400 just so that they're a little forgot going. Now it's interesting, it went to 400 but then it switched to 250. So it looks like the minimum is is uh, 250 and 400 there. I thought I maybe said 200 in the initial talk, but anyway, maybe 250 and 400 is the max. So we got sink baskets on, or maybe that's the max for sink baskets. Let me, I'm going to have to check this out. So we got one basket now. Yeah, it's still 250, 400, so we'll, uh, we'll go with that. It's not letting me... Okay, there we go. Sink baskets, 400, uh, 15 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and check out the sound. That's running. Not very loud at all. Quieter than me. That's pretty good. Yeah, it, it's staying below 35 the whole time. Both baskets, that's good. I'm going to turn that off. Pretty good on the sound. It sound, you know, not too loud. I mean, I do have a directed mic, so you might hear some sound from it, but it's not very loud at all. So now I'm going to do a temperature test. I've got a temperature gauge here I'm going to put right there on the bottom. And close this up gently. See if maybe I can keep it standing up while it's checking temp. It doesn't matter if it falls over though, it'll still track temp anyway. It's turning it on. I'm going to do just side one. Going to up the temp to the max of 400. And the time, just for an even amount of time, I'm going to set it out to 30 minutes, even though I may not run it to full 30. And I'm going to go ahead and hit start there. And just going to let it run for a while. Okay, so I've let things go for 10 minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and stop it and check the temperature in there. So I'm going to get it on out. And uh, let's see here. We are reading 400 degrees there. So it did get up to the target temperature, 400. It's starting to drop. I'm going to feel the opposite side. This side feels warm. It's not hot, but it's warm. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cooler to this side, but this wall is warmer than this wall noticeably. It's not hot, I can put my hand there, but it's warm and this side is not. So that's something to keep in mind when you're not using this side. It is going to get a little warmer over here and I haven't noticed that with some other dual basket air fryers, but it's true with this one. Now what I want to do, I want to take that thermometer, put it over on side number two, and I want to close things up. And I'm going to do another temperature test with both sides on and sinking the baskets, moving the time up to 30 minutes. And I'm going to put the temp up to 400 again. And I'm going to go ahead and start that. And we'll see if when both sides are running for like an extended period of time, I'll let it go for 15 minutes. It'll also help do a little bit of burn off for both of these baskets too. And there's a little bit of a smell. It's not super strong, but there's a little bit of smell coming off of them, you know, first time running. But let it run for about 15 minutes on both sides and see what I get from this side, if it'll pull it up to 400 when both are running. So I'll bring you back in a minute. Well, about 15 minutes, so bring you back. Alright, things have been running for almost 15 minutes now on both sides. I'm just going to feel around the cooker, see how things feel. Now, feeling down here, I actually do feel heat on the counter. The counter is pretty, a little hot. It's a little hot. 
so there is yeah it's a little hot there is like exhaust apparently coming out the bottom there is some coming out the bottom it's a little hot down there I'd be careful where you set this I am uh, just got a little little concern myself I've used others on this car that bring heat out the bottom some and it was able to maintain I guess its integrity through it but yeah there's there's heat coming out the bottom for sure I, I feel it the bottom underneath here is hot it, the counter is hot. Up top is an intake. It's sucking the air in. I guess it's got a shake reminder to tell me that you know I could shake my food halfway through. So that's something to keep in mind. The back does have some exhaust. It's not too hot for me to put my hand back there though. So I'm able to put my hand back there although it's hot air coming out. I think it might be even a little hotter on the bottom because it's hitting the counter. The top is not hot. The sides are not hot. Well, this side is a little, a little warm. Can you check this out? Yeah, it's a little warm down, like up top of, up top here it's cooler. Down here it's warmer. So down there it's warmer. I can put my hand there, but it definitely feels warm. On the front of the doors it's a little hot. I don't want to keep my hand there a long time. Down lower on the back is warmer. So yeah, down where the baskets are, it's warmer. You can put your hand there, but it feels pretty warm, almost hot. So that's basically how things feel around the cooker. So I'll go ahead and check what's going on as far as the temperature on that temperature gauge now. We see it, it was at about 400 when I first opened it. I saw it start to come down as soon as I opened the door. It was right about 400. So I think it is pretty much keeping 400 degrees on both sides, keeping it uh, temperature appropriately on both sides even when both run. I know that I've reviewed some where you do two sides at the same time and you see a very noticeable drop in the temperature that it can maintain. So this cooker is able to maintain temp on both sides and I think that's probably because it's only going up to 400 to begin with. It's not going up to um, 450 or 500. So it's able to maintain that temperature on both sides and it's only going up to 400. So that's your temperature test there. I do also want to point out, you notice as soon as I stop cooks, things default back to this 350, 15 minutes. So I don't think that you get any memory at all as far as your cooks. Nothing's memorized. It doesn't remember where you cooked from last time. So you're going to have to, if there's a setting that you commonly use, it's not a preset and not the default of 350, 15 minutes. You're going to have to make manual adjustments every time you use it. So now I'm going to test toasting a slice of my homemade almond flour whole wheat bread. You can find the recipe here on the channel. Putting that here in basket one. I will say my homemade almond flour whole wheat bread is far more resilient than your store brought bread. So it takes more to cook it, but it will give me kind of a general gauge of how well this does for that sort of thing. So. I'm going to take temperature up to 450. Whoops. I don't know if I like that it flips over to the lowest once you go too high and then you're like trying to go back down and you might go too far. I'm going to do five minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit on this side one. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Well, actually, I'm at five, not four. Yeah. So you can make changes on the fly, that's good to know. So like if I went over to temp, yeah, I could, I could change time and temp on the fly. That was something I didn't check earlier. But we'll let this go for five minutes of trying to make toast, and then I'll bring you back. All right, full five minutes is done. And see what we have here. See it, uh, Cooked pretty good on one side, the other side got just a little browning, and I'm just not for going in and turning it over, even though I know I could, just don't feel like bothering, that's why. And uh, but we see it got some good toasting on that side, and so did a decent job. For this bread, five minutes, cooking it to this level is about normal, that's about normal. So it's about what I would expect from my bread. and. Uh, that's from using many other basket air fryers 
similar similar results, similar kind of results. So it's doing pretty good so far. Um, I don't know a way to stop the beeping. I don't know how to turn from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So if anybody asks a comment about that, I don't know, and I don't think I'm ever going to know unless somebody else figures it out. But we see how things did with toast. All right, what I'm making now are some almond flour mug brownies and I'll flash the ingredients for the recipe on the screen. I'm going to be using four small ramekins to make those. Side one is still a little warmer than side two so side one's brownies might get a little more done than two but I think things will be okay anyway. Basically I cooked these at 350 for 10, min 10 minutes when I use a basket air fryer. And then after that, I let them set in the basket, still closed, for another 5 minutes. So it's like 15 minutes total, 10 cooking and 5 setting. So, that, you know, when they set, they just kind of continue to cook in there off of the uh, leftover heat in the cooker. So, oops, not get over, get in there. I think I'm going to take some out of this one and transfer it over here. A little more evenness of the batter. Just going to press these down, sit it there, kind of flatten the bottom there, and then get them on in. But these usually turn out pretty well. I have sprayed the ramekins with some extra light olive oil. Do not confuse extra light olive oil with regular olive oil or extra virgin. It's a totally different blend. And, uh, it works better at high heats and can you know help with keeping things non-stick and such. I use a hand pump sprayer for that. It's not an aerosol can type of a spray oil that I use, but use the one of your choice. So got all those in. Going to put them in the basket. Oops, sorry about that them in the baskets. Like I said, side two is basically cool. Side one is still warm. It's a toast test, but we're going to go with it anyway. So we're going to do 350. Oh, actually I want to sink the baskets. 350, 10 minutes. And I'll just count down five minutes after they're done. So hitting start. Going to let things go ahead and cook. Bring you back in about 15 minutes. Okay, so the cook time is done plus five minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them out. I usually don't preheat, but this side one was already, you know, like I said, warm from earlier. And you can kind of see how they look. I'm gonna set them aside for now, let them cool down. And after they've cooled off, we'll uh, check them out later. I did want to mention that I don't know how to stop the shake reminder. Basically, halfway between any cook no matter what you're doing it does that shake thing beeping for shake and uh, I guess if you need to shake that's cool but if you don't it does it and I don't know of any way to stop it they don't mention in the manual any way to stop that or to do um, Celsius temperature or anything of that sort so just gonna let these set aside for a bit so that they can cool down and then we'll have a better look at them but I'll um, looks like they did okay as far as the cook, but we'll check them out more later. Alright, I've got a frozen salmon filet here, 4 ounces. I'm seasoning it up with some ranch dressing and some Old Bay seasoning also. And I'm going to put it in on one side. Things are still pretty hot in there from the earlier cook, so basically already preheated I guess you could say. Let's put some Old Bay over on this side. If you're not familiar with Old Bay, all I can say is be good for you to try it sometime. Got some extra light olive oil on there too to help the seasoning adhere to the frozen meat. Now I'm going up to 375 on the cook time. I mean, for the cook temperature, 375. For the cook time, I wish it would, it flashes back and forth. I wish you would just stay in place sometimes. 
I'm setting it to 30. I'll check it after maybe 20 and see if it needs the remaining 10. But I'm going to go ahead and let that run. Bring it back when things seem like they're done. Alright, so let things go for 20 minutes. I'm going to open up and just check. See what the temperature is. And it's 157. Wow. Yeah, it's it's hot. I mean, it's 170s. Yeah. Done in 20 minutes flat. It did, you know, get a bit of a preheat because things were cooking something earlier. But there's our finished piece of salmon there. Pretty good stuff. So while that just kind of sets and reabsorbs juices for a moment, I'm going to show you a couple of the mug brownies. This is one that was on side two. This is one that was on side one. Now this one that was on side one got a little bit more cook. One on side two finished, I'd say, just right. I mean, it finished just right the way that it should be. And the one that was on side one that was already hot, because usually I don't preheat them, you know, it got a little, a little overcooked. So things finished as expected, I would say. I'm just going to go ahead, thank God for this, and just do a quick taste of this here. You can kind of see inside there where I got the spoon, well, got the spoonful out. Tastes good. Turned out well. I mean, this one, you know, it looks the same. It's probably just a little more done, but probably all good, too. I don't want to, you know, mess that one up and end up eating off of two of them. So, just going to give this another few minutes to just cool down and reabsorb juices just a little bit more, and then I'll do a quick taste of this. Okay, just give things a little more time to reabsorb juices, and, uh, I'm going to go ahead and taste a piece. You can see, uh, well, I guess the skin's kind of sticking it there, but I got a piece here, so I'm going to taste. Okay, still pretty hot, but it does have some juiciness in it, so it turned out well. I was able to cook the fish just fine. And so I wanted to talk real quick about cleaning the cooker. The two baskets are top rack dishwasher safe. Basically when you're cleaning this you just want to use a warm soapy rag to wipe the unit down and then a wet one to basically wipe off the excess. I usually don't put any of this into the dishwasher. I think it'll last longer if you don't and you just wash things by hand. And you can see that the um, it's got kind of that non-stick material on there. Even though that's not the best for your health, it does make cleaning easier. So, uh, you know, there's that there. So, it shouldn't be too hard to clean. So, let's talk about the warranty. The cooker comes with a one-year limited warranty. And so, that's, I guess, pretty standard for, you know, most manufacturers. But we see that the cooker was able to go through all the paces, and that's pretty cool. And so if you liked what you saw, you can support the channel. There's lots of ways in the video description, such as my cookbook, merch, membership, donations, um, YouTube memberships. Um, there's other ways in the video description, Amazon shop. You can always check out my blog, superwaveovenrecipes.com. That's superwaveovenrecipes.com. And so if you did like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Share the video with a friend, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification icon and good eating.